Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome dear students, this is a video for the subject of education, for the course of Bachelors in Education and for the paper of Conceptual Foundations of Education. This is a topic on Introduction to Education and Related Concepts and in this lecture we will be covering Aims of Education, Individual and Social. This video lecture has been recorded by Dr. Iram Khan. The course coordinator of this lecture and the presenter of this lecture is Dr. Iram Khan from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. The academic expert or reviewer for this lecture is Professor Jaseem Ahmed from Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. This video lecture has been produced under the project DTH Swayam Prabha Channels of MHRD, New Delhi. Hello dear students, I am Dr. Iram Khan, Assistant Professor at IASC Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. Today we are going to have a discussion on the major topic of education and related concepts. And in this lecture, we are going to discuss on aims of education, individual and social. So first of all, let us see the objectives of this lecture. The objectives are to discuss the concepts of individual and social aims of education. To explain the narrower and wider meanings of individual and social aims. And to elaborate the relationship between individual and social aims. So first of all, let us see that what are the individualistic or the socialistic aims. So what exactly these two terms, the individualistic aims and the socialistic aims are all about. So we have seen uh, since the very early times uh, that uh, burning questions before educationists were there related to education and uh, should be from the individualistic point of view or from a socialistic angle. So in other words, you can say that whether the aim of education should be individualistic or socialistic. So those educationists who think that individual is greater than society have been emphasizing the individual aim of education so that the individual is able to develop his or her personality to the fullest. So just on the contrary, on the other hand, those educationists who regard the greater importance of society than the individual have been insisting on the social aims of education. So that social development goes on continuously. So now the problem is that whether there can be a synthesis between these rival aims of education or this is not possible. So we, we just have to see that what exactly can be done. So for this, we have to study impartially about both the aims in their narrower and wider forms to know whether the two are really contradictory or they differ only in emphasis. So we can just go ahead and study both of these uh, aims, the individualistic aim and the socialistic aims and we try to investigate that whether there is a coherence there is a relationship between these two or they both are very much individual terms or you can say that both are separately addressed. So let us try to see all these things. So individual aim of education, if we try to understand that what exactly is this individual aim of education, it means what exactly it means. So individual aim of education means that education should develop individuals according to their own interests, 
their capacities, their specialities, and what they actually want to do. So it should be noted that individual aim of education is not a, a new thing. In ancient India, in Greece, and some other countries, uh, this aim was given due importance and very important position, very prime position. So in the present times also we can see that uh, since we have we have started the entry of psychology in the field of education, we have seen few of those people or the educationists like like uh, uh, Rosha, like Pestalozzi, like uh, Froebel, like T. P. Nunn, and other eminent educationists that they have uh, again started giving greater emphasis on the individual aim of education. So uh, we have we have seen that uh, now this individual aim is also seen with some importance. We will try to understand the narrow and the wider meaning of the individual aims of education. So while trying to understand the narrow meaning of individual aim, we can see that in its narrower sense, individual aim is known as the self-expression or the all-round development of the child and the natural development even though of this individual or the child. So in its narrower sense, individual aim is based on the philosophy of naturalism according to which education should develop the unique individuality of a child in accordance with his or her instincts. And if we go back and see what exactly is uh, stated in the history, Actually, history reveals the fact that it was Rosha who first of all advocated this aim through his insistence on education in the labs of nature according to the nature of the child. But after him, there were so many other people, so many other educationists who emphasized the importance of the individual aim. And among these people, there was a person from England. Uh, he was a Sir Percy Nunn uh, who has uh, actually very much uh, kind of support was given by him uh, to this philosophy of uh, the individualistic aims and uh, hence we can say that uh, it ranks at the top of the list this uh, Sir Percy Nunn is the uh, topmost person who is very much inclined towards the individual aims he actually says that the central aim of education is the autonomous development of the individual. And uh, if you see the book or the famous work of uh, uh, Percy Nunn, uh, which is uh, titled as Education, its data and the first principles, he says, he actually states that nothing good enters into the human world except in and through the free activities of individual men and women and that the educational practice must be shaped to accord with the truth. So these are the words of Percy Nunn. So in the second chapter of his book, of his book uh, which is named as Education, Its Data and the First Principles, Nunn actually remarks that each species is moving towards perfection. And in this way, we can say that individual aim is accordance to nature. And uh, then uh, we can say that in the narrower sense, individual aim of education emphasizes self-expression or natural development of the child so that after receiving education according to his or her interest, inclinations, capacities and needs, the child is able to choose a vocation according to his own, his or her own nature and interest. So it is no uh, kind of uh, fixing some something uh, into, into certain patterns. Basically, it is developed day by day. It is nurtured. And we try to make sure that the child go ahead and uh, actually try to investigate all those interests, all those inclinations and the capacities which this child is having and the aims can be developed according to all these vested interests and the inclinations and capacities and the um, specialities of the 
child. So let us try to understand now the wider meaning of individual aim. In its wider sense, individual aim is known as self-realization. Psychology, if we go ahead and uh, investigate the psychological aspect, uh, psychology says that the wider aspects of the development of individuality is to be done and it is very much essential. So this is because the psychological researchers have clearly established the fact that each individual is born with his or her own peculiar and distinct innate tendencies and capacities. So it is the prime function of education to develop each individual to the fullest and completely in accordance to his or her interest, inclinations, aptitudes and capacities in such a way that uh, this individual becomes an able and capable person. So in other words, we can say that education of the individual should be planned with a view to individual good as well as the good of the society of which this individual is an integral part. And again, in the words of uh, Sir Percy Nunn, he has, uh, he has also reinforced uh, one argument by saying that education should help the child to make his original contribution to the variegated whole of human life as full and as truly characteristic as his nature permits. So these are the words of Sir Percy Nunn, where he is actually talking about the wider meaning of uh, the individual aims of a human life or a human being. So it can be noted uh, that here Sir Percy Nunn reveals himself as a naturalist when he actually argues in favor of individual aim on the basis of biological phenomenon uh, in, the, in the second chapter of his book, which we have talked about earlier also. Uh, but this is not the reality. Actually, Nunn believes that if an individual is cut away from society, he or she cannot develop himself or herself in any way and further he asserts, T.P. Nunn asserts that individual aim of education does not deny or minimize the responsibility of man to his fellows for individual life, cannot develop only in terms of his own nature and that is social as truly as self-regarding. So these are again the words of Sir Percy Nunn. This clarifies that the fact that according to uh, Sir T.P. Nunn, uh, also development is not merely self-expression, but a higher stage of self-realization. So according to him, only self-expression or self-development is not to be regarded as the utmost important thing in the individual's life, but self-realization which is a very much higher stage of uh, human development should also be regarded as the uh, foremost important aim or the individual aim of a human life. So these are a few of those things which we, we are uh, interested in talking about regarding the wider meaning of individual aim. Now let us come to the social aim of education. What exactly is the social aim or the, all these things which we are talking about are related to? So first we see the meaning of social aim. So some of the educationists have uh, laid greater interest in emphasizing upon the social aim of education. So that education develops in the children uh, the social feeling which will make them contribute their utmost to meet the demands of society after meeting their own needs because if you if you see uh, once we are trying to uh, to fulfill our needs first the basic needs should be fulfilled and then only we can go ahead and uh, see that what exactly we can do for the society so 
utmost uh, thing is to first uh, satisfy our basic needs and then we can go ahead and see the demands of society uh, and we, we go ahead and make our social aims. So these educationists evaluate the society higher than the individual. They believe that man is a social being. Uh, man cannot live without society. So in case um, a human beings or the man is cut off from society, it will be very difficult for him or her to remain alive. So the well-known educationist Raymond has a very aptly actually uh, quoted that an isolated individual is a figment of imagination. So according, according to Raymond, even we can't imagine a person who is fully isolated. He will be just, a, he or she will be just the figment of imagination. So this much importance is given to the social life by Raymond. So let us try to understand it in much more depth. First, we will see that what is, is the narrow meaning of social aim. So in its narrow meaning, social aim of education is equated with state socialism. What exactly is this? So in, in this sense, liberty of the individual is totally curtailed and all aspects of individual life are socialized. In other words, total power is uh, concentrated in the state or the go government. Here the state is actually the government. Any individual cannot even dream of his individual identity. So this uh, individual is expected to sacrifice his or her everything, even his or her life for the good and welfare of the state. As such, the state frames such a scheme of education through which it is able to control the aims, the curriculum and the methods of teaching. Individuals are subjected to rigid discipline to curb their sense of identity and individualism. And not only this, every attempt is made to indoctrinate in the individuals the feelings of unquestioning unquestioning obedience, meek submission together with a sense of total surrender and sacrifice. And uh, uh, if we see the history, Spartan education in ancient Greece and uh, German education under, uh, under the uh, very well-known person, Hitler, are glaring examples of such a narrow concept of social aim. So here Hitler was a dictator and he was trying to impose or he was trying to indoctrinate his values, his, his own ideas to the individuals and these uh, ideas and indoctrinations were regarded as the social aim of those individuals at that time. So we can say that these are few of those uh, things which are related to the narrow meaning of social. Then we talk about the wider meaning of social aim. Uh, we can say that in its uh, wider sense, the social aim is equated with democratic socialism. So in this sense, it does accept the importance of state, but on the other hand, or uh, we can say that at the same time, does not agree with the insignificance of the individual before the state. This is possible maybe sometimes, but this non-agreement uh, with, the, with the state of the individual is even possible. So in other words, we can say that the insignificance of the individual is not subordinated to state, but is made to behave in such a way that it ensures the development of society along with its own development. So we can say that in the wider meaning, the social aim grants liberty to the individual to enjoy certain rights, to develop his or her personality, but at the same time expects 
from the individual to serve the state to the best of his or her ability and capacity. And if we try to seek examples from the society, such type of democratic socialism is found in, uh, in Britain or in England uh, and even in the United States of America. India and other democratic countries where uh, we are having democracy has been combined with socialism. So it may be noted that true citizens are greatly essential for the progress and prosperity of the state. So we can say that uh, uh, all the uh, all these things, all uh, all of those discussions uh, regarding the democratic states have accepted the individual aim of education in its wider meaning in different forms. Um, have the individual aim of education uh, basically they formulated uh, such a scheme of education which uh, develops patriots and dynamic citizens duly motivated to serve the state sincerely to the best of their efforts. So in this way, there, there is some sort of nationalism which is, which is actually added once we talk about the wider meaning of the social aim. Now we, we uh, should see that what exactly uh, can be the point of synthesis between the individual and the social aim of education. We have seen in all those discussions related to the individual and social aims of education, basically it clearly indicates that in their extreme forms, both of these aims, the individual aim and the social aim uh, can be regarded as one-sided and not uh, actually uh, are very much complete or, or, um, or desirable. So we can say that as such, uh, while the one is its uh, extreme from, uh, uh, like basically it's, a, it's the, is the most extreme form of uh, advocates and it, uh, it basically unrestricted freedom to give to the individual for, for his or her fullest development. The other one exhorts that the state or society should have absolute control over the individual. So actually both of them are the extremes. So the one ideal of a complete unrestricted freedom may develop the individual to an uh, indisciplined and arbitrary working man who may or may not think of society is not desirable in a modern society. Basically this type of human being will not be uh, regarded or will not be a useful uh, person for the society. On the other hand, the other ideal of absolute control and rigid discipline reduces the individual to the level of uh, mere slaves or those who are serving uh, the, the personnels who are the for at, at the foremost level of the state. So both are not conducive either to individual development or to the development of society in the real sense of the term. And again, if we go ahead and see uh, some of the evidences from the history, history stands as a witness to the fact that whenever and wherever one ideal or the other in its extreme narrow form was adapted or adopted as a basis of educational organization, the individual as well as the society suffered from disaster. So we can say, we can make a kind of a, a consensus that neither the individual nor the society should be regarded as higher and superior to each other. As there is no possibility of uh, uh, actually you know, making a kind of uh, uh, two different poles between the two in their extreme forms. But if the wider concepts of both the aims are accepted, then a synthesis between the two ideals is easy and very much natural. So uh, actually there is no mutual conflict or contradiction between the wider concepts of the two ideals. The individual is as essential to society as the society is unavoidable and necessary to the individual. Both cooperate in the development of each other. The development of 
one leads to the development of the other. So we can say that both are interdependent and mutually supplementary and complementary. So here we can make a kind of consensus that both the society, society related aim and the individual aim, both are very much important and they, they have to be synthesized for the uh, proper development of an individual and also the society. So we can say that both are, both the aims are interdependent and mutually supplementary and complementary to each other. If we further go ahead and uh, see the emphasis of all these uh, two terms, the social aim and the individual aim, we can see that uh, uh, by nature a man or a human being is uh, actually a social being and the entire life is uh, closely related to society. In isolation, the human being will not survive and it can be said that it is not expected for him to behave against the social norms and ideals. So as it is inconceivable to believe an individual without society and also a society without an individual is actually unconceivable. So the society is an organization of individuals brought into existence by the individuals themselves for their own good and their welfare. So the development of one or an individual is the development of the other. Both cannot develop in isolation, cut away from each other. It's not possible to develop. Basically, if you are living in isolation, how, how is it possible for you to develop? So as such, the wider concept of the two ideas or the two ideas meet together as one process of development conducive to both. To both means to the individual and to the society. Neither the individual be allowed to neglect or destroy social norms and social patterns of uh, behavior and nor the state or the society be allowed to assume absolute power to reduce the individuals to, to actually uh, very mere or uh, meek uh, forms of existence. So the individual develops himself or herself with the help and active cooperation of society and its various social agencies. On the other hand, the society develops itself naturally when individuals develop social sense of service, sacrifice and devote their energies to the progress of society or the state. So complete self-realization means the development of the individual as a social being, an integral part of society. So, once we try to uh, make a kind of conclusion of, uh, of these uh, terms, we can see the words of uh, J.S. Ross, who says that indeed there is no conflict between self-realization and social service as aims of life and education. So here he is talking about self-realization and social service as aims of life and education. So he says that there is no conflict means that there is like both these things, the self-realization or the uh, which is regarded as the wider meaning of the individual aim and the social services, which is again the uh, one of the foremost important uh, social aim. Both of these don't have any conflict. Both can be together taken once we talk about the social aims and the individual aims. We have to see the philosophical basis of the relationship of these two uh, aims, the individual and the social aims of education. Let us see that what exactly is the philosophical basis of these, the relationship between these two aims. The individual and social aims of education can be synthesized on the philosophical basis also. And uh, we have seen few of those ideological uh, examples given by Ross and uh, Nunn. And they have said, that Ross and Nunn both have attempted this kind of synthesis. 
they believe in two phases of individuality uh, which they named as the first the first point is self expression and the second one is self realization we have already seen that these two things the self expression and self realization were emphasized once we were talking about the uh, the wider meaning and the uh, narrow meaning of uh, these two type of things so in the self expression the feeling of self assertion predominates is actually the feeling of self assertion is very much important once we are talking about the self expression and according to this the individual behaves freely in conformity with his or her basic instincts and inherent capacities irrespective of social good or loss if the individual aim is taken to mean self expression then it cannot adjust itself with the social aim but if we see the truth in that uh, that th this basic urge of self expression is not always present in the individual this is simply an earlier stage of development as the development of the individual goes on further this urge of self expression is sublimated to higher and noble ideal of self realization it is here at this stage that the individual exercises self control and self discipline this individual does not even dream to injure the society which has uh, led him or her to the stage of self realization at this time this individual begins to behave in such a manner that all his thinking and activities lead to social good the good of other individuals who are uh, who, who may be um, his or her fellow beings and fellow travelers towards the same ideal of self realization the all these discussions are leading us towards a uh, few of those things which can be uh, clearly proving that the ideal of self realization is a great and noble ideal it emphasizes both the good of the individual and the good of the society of which this individual is an integral part so both the ideals meet at one common aim of self realization by the individual which includes the development of both the individual and society and and that's why uh, we have seen that ross actually very aptly remarks that individuality is of no value and personality is a meaningless term apart from the social environment in which they are developed and made manifest self realization can be achieved only through social service and social ideals of great value can come into being only through free individuals who can develop valuable individuality this circle cannot be broken so this is something which is stated by js ross and he is stating about this vicious circle or the cycle which is actually going ahead and taking the individual to to become the part of the society and to uh, to make the self realization uh, and in this um, in this actually uh, the way of getting the self realization uh, this individual is also uh, thinking about the society and the social environment so few of those uh, uh, educationists are also stating few of their thoughts regarding this so let us see that what exactly uh, they are saying uh, tp nan he also holds more or less the same view and according to him the individual is uh, indebted to society which has contributed a lot to his development and this social contribution will be a continuing process in in future for this individual so in this way if the child is to become an active member of society he or she should not only strive to develop his or her personality but also contribute maximum to the development of society as well 
so in this in this way nun is uh, is actually shown uh, we can see that tp nun is of a very firm belief that a develop uh, that this individual or the development of the individuality is not a possession of the individual alone but it is a contributory and cooperative agency for the development of society so in the good of all lies the good of the individual because if if the society is developing automatically the individual will also develop so in this uh, way according to uh, tp nun the highest development of the individual is his self realization and nun has given a very uh, empathetic statement he says that individuality develops only in a social environment where it can feed on common interests and common activities so with all these uh, arguments uh, it is now we can say that it is well argued and well established fact that both the individual and the society are mutually supplementary and complementary so the development of one leads naturally to the development of the other so in this uh, way we can say that the system of education should be organized in such a way that it achieves the development of of both of these components the individual and the society so once uh, both of these uh, components will develop automatically they will lead to uh, to the development of the other one will be developed so so the other will also be develop so in this way we can say that both of these aims uh, can't be talked in isolation they are very much related to each other and they are very much complementary and supplementary in nature so uh, now we have seen very uh, important arguments related to the individual aims and uh, the social aims uh, so quickly we should summarize that what exactly we have studied today we have seen the concept of individual aims of education then we have seen the concept of the social aims of education we have uh, we have thought about and we have talked about the narrower and the wider meanings of the individual and social aims and we have also seen that what is the relationship between the individual and the social aims and now uh, with all those uh, uh, statements and all those uh, thought processes given by different important educationists like tp nun js ross uh, we can make a kind of uh, a statement that uh, the individual aim and the social aim can't be talked about in isolation if we talk about in isolation uh, we can't do justice with these two aims basically both these aims go hand in hand and if one is actually uh, made properly done then the other will automatically develop so we can say that individual aim and the social aim both are complementary and supplementary to each other if one is developed the other will automatically develop so we have to try to make an individual strengthened and in this way we will be contributing our bit to the society and in in this way the state is going to develop in a very proper manner so uh, with the, these words i will like to make an a conclusion of uh, this particular lecture these are few of those references and the suggested links which were referred while preparing the lecture and i hope that uh, you can go ahead and uh, uh, see towards all those links and even much more literature can be seen uh, so that this uh, this point of uh, social aim and individual aim becomes very much clear to you and you cannot even contribute to the society for the good of the society and uh, let's hope to see each other in a, another session from my side thank you so much you are watching a video on the introduction to education and related concepts and in this lecture there was a discussion based on aims of education individual and social 
This video lecture was recorded by faculty at home during the national lockdown period for COVID-19 pandemic using minimal technical resources. Technical errors, if any, are unintentional and may please be ignored. For any queries with regard to this lecture or broadcast, kindly send your email to techsupport at dth.ac.in. Thank you so much.